To use Liquify, you need to select a layer and you also need to select a pixel layer. Anything else, type, shapes, whatever, will not work. Pattern layers, you need to use it as a pixel. So if you haven't got it as a pixel, just go to layer and rasterize so it becomes a pixel layer. Then go over here, top left, and just go to liquefy. It's that one there. It's the second one. There's the affinity one. There's the liquefy. Click there. For this video, I'm just going to show you about the mesh. So here's the mesh. Now I'm just going to show quickly applying the actual one single brush stroke. I'm going to do brushes later. So you can see here divisions. You can show the mesh. You can turn that on or off. So you just select that or put it on. Personally, I'm going to keep it like that. So show mesh. You can make it very small, make it large, up to you. The color, well, that's useful because if you click on there, you can change it to blue, green, this grid. Because you might have a very, obviously a black image or something, black shape. Obviously it's not going to be much use if it's black for the color. You can also change the opacity so you can fade it away. Or uh, you can't change the thickness. You can't change the thickness of the line, which is a pity actually. Nor can you actually save the grid. Be really nice if you could do that as well. So uh, here's some additional mesh features up here. Basically the same as down here as well, but they're just options up here. So what you've got, you can change that. And I'm just going to keep it about there. Now I'm just going to apply it once. Just going to very simple, basic. Yeah, I'm just going to apply it so you can actually see the mesh being altered. That's the key thing. Well, you've got here, you notice you've got 100%. So you've got 100% setting. Well, what you can do, you can reconstruct the mesh. You can just push it down to zero and it goes back to what it was. You can also go the other way, push it so it really becomes extreme version of it at 200. Now you can't enter 400, it will just go to 200. Pity really, it would be nice if you could extend it further. So you can set it, say, like there. And you can then apply it. So you can click apply and it's just applied. That's it. It's done. It's frozen. So it goes back to 100%. However, what you can still do, you can still go back there. I mean, it's a bit odd, isn't it? You can still put it back to zero and it still puts it back. But it is click apply. And of course, you can apply it again. So if you apply it again now, just apply it again so you can see it just applied like that. And you can see the everything just dragged across like that. Then click apply. And then you can drag that back. And again, just puts it back to the thing. It's a bit of an unusual feature, but you can set it to say 200 and you can push it there or 100. So 100%, obviously it's taken into account previous 100% and now you've got the 100%, but that's because of the apply. You've applied it and now apply again and it puts it always back to 100% and you can think. But as soon as you put it to 0%, it just puts it back to the, the raw thing. But it, it's obviously much more useful when it's say like 30% or whatever between those values. However, what you can also do, you can always reset the mesh. So if you've got this mesh and you decide, you know what, I don't want it distorted like that. You can always undo, Control Z, Command Z, etc. standard undo. But you can always reset the mesh. So you just put it back. That's another option. And it puts it back to 100% again. You can also save the mesh. So if you just create something like that, you just make, you think that's the best mesh ever. Absolute mesh even, maybe not mess. But if you do that, you can save it. Click there, save mesh, and you can save it. Obviously something better than probably the documents folder. And then you can load it again. Also, you've got last mesh. I have never used that. I must admit, not much use for me personally. But you can always reset it. So simple as that, reset it. So You've got this mesh now. Now, if you go over here and you change divisions, you can see it follows exactly the same. So that's all it's doing. It's not doing it. So you can see exactly the same mesh there. Just happens to be more lines. And of course, you can push it really high to 50. 50 is the maximum. Don't, don't know. Just going to say that. 100. No, 50 is the maximum. You can push it down to very, very small. And you can even do decimalization. I'm not certain why you would need it that fine. Very strange. It's actually more noticeable when you go for this, one of these other options, this one, the turbulence. So you can go for turbulence. I think turbulence is great. So you apply the term and you can see it really crackle and break apart there in that mesh. I think it's a great effect anyway. I would love if there was a feature to be able to save this mesh as an actual physical 
great, you know, design. It'd be really brilliant. But you can't. But again, you can still reconstruct it and you can see you can reduce it down or go the other way and you can see there. Now you don't have to, I've been moving it, but you don't have to move it. Just keep it there on top and you can see it breaks it up all over the place. But again, divisions. You can make it very, very tiny. You can really see the detail of divisions. Not that it makes any difference. You can't really alter the individual. That would be a great feature as well. If you could actually selectively go to the individual. But you can, of course, you can zoom in. There is a zoom. You can always zoom in and just go, you know what, I want to see that mesh really very finely tuned. Let's just go back to that. And you can see it even more close. But to actually manipulate the individual would be tricky. But again, you can come out with divisions and you can still see these great lines all crisscrossing. And again, at any point, reset mesh, put it back to what it was before. And again, you can see that as you do this. So that is the mesh fish. However, now I'm going to go through these other ones over here, but this one is probably the most useful because this is a liquify reconstruct tool, which is basically reconstruct mesh. So that tool there, you can go click that. So this is not really a brush tool. So at this point, what you can do, you can reduce the size. Let's just make the size of that smaller to make it even smaller. So you want to like, oh, maybe not that small. You want to just manipulate this area. Now this tool here, this one, is much better than using this because that just applies it to the whole lot. But here, you can just apply it there and you can see that area is then just cleaned up. It's very, very brutal. It just puts it back. It, like you click it, bang, it's near enough back to that. And you can see you just click it very localized area. Just apply it. Click there, click there, click there and it reconstructs it. So that's another great mesh feature that you can use. As I said, these ones here, these are exactly the same as the other ones. Save mesh, load mesh, and reset mesh. I'm not certain why they're even there, because it's all in this functionality, in this mesh panel, which is very useful. And as I say, got some great features. So that's it, that's a run through of the mesh. Please check out my other videos, which will be released fairly soon, about the brush, as well as the mask, and also how to use it with things like channels, also other, other things within Affinity Photo. Hope you found this of interest. Thank you much.